Thousands of jet aircraft, row after row for miles, sit for years under the hot midday sun, in the Arizona desert. You're looking at America's aircraft boneyard. This vast open space is filled with the ghosts of the US government. If these aircraft could speak, they'd tell of decades of deployments and missions all over the world. The specific inventory is classified, but as a repository of America's mostly forgotten history, here is what we know. Row after row of B-52 bombers, massive C-5 Galaxies, workhorse C-130 Hercules, A-10 Thunderbolts, KC-135 tankers, and countless aging fighter aircraft. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. A recent estimate claimed more than 4,000 aircraft are parked here. Among the most iconic aircraft stored at the Boneyard, are B-52 bombers. As you can see from these images, retired B-52s are often stored with their wings separated. The reason is a 1991 arms control treaty between the US and the former Soviet Union. It reduced the number of strategic bombers each side could have. It required that both sides be able to verify disabled bombers with satellite imagery. These wings and tail sections were left laying beside the airframe so that the Russians could see them from space. These images almost feel like the vacation photos from an aviation enthusiast's dream vacation. The concept of aircraft storage boneyards began during World War II. Aircraft that were no longer in active service or were in need of repairs, were stored in large open areas. After the war, the davis monthan Air Base near Tucson, Arizona was chosen as a storage facility for surplus aircraft. It became the primary boneyard for the Pentagon. During the Cold War, the facility served as a strategic reserve and could be used to quickly reactivate aircraft if needed. The end of the Cold War led to a significant reduction in the size of the U.S. military. Many aircraft were retired, and the boneyard saw an influx of decommissioned planes. Some were scrapped, while others were kept in a state of preservation for potential future use. Today, the boneyard is operated by the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. It provides this service to all branches of the U.S. military, as well as civilian agencies of the federal government such as NASA. A combination of factors makes desert locations ideal for aircraft storage. Dry conditions helps prevent corrosion, preserving structural integrity and components. But desert conditions are not all positive. Aircraft in open storage can degrade over time. Continuous exposure to sunlight and UV radiation can cause damage to materials, including specialized coatings, rubber, and some composites. Sand and dust, carried by the wind, can abrade surfaces and damage sensitive components. Lubricants may dry up, seals may degrade, and moving parts may seize over time. Specially designed covers are placed over engine intakes and sensitive instrument nozzles. A high-strength UV-resistant plastic is heat-shrunk to doors, hatches and windshields. Many retired planes are cannibalized for spare parts to support active units. Some are sold to allied nations. Salvaged parts, also known as cannibalization, can be used to support and maintain active aircraft. 
Parts may also be used in the restoration of historical or museum aircraft, to maintain their authenticity and historical significance. Exhibition aircraft in many museums, including the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, have many parts obtained from Davis Monthan. Many film and television productions have used the Boneyard, both as a location, and as a source of authentic airframes. The Boneyard remains a fascinating site that has captured the imagination of generations of aviation enthusiasts. While the number of aircraft may dwindle over time, this dramatic landscape of America's history is sure to be active for many years to come. If you'd like more videos like this one, taking you inside restricted spaces, be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let us know. And subscribe to our channel, so you'll know when new episodes drop. Thanks for watching.